you know, Ted Cruz, who's been my friend and is, he's decided to run a very, you know, deceitful campaign at the end on some things he's saying. People see through that. In Washington, after campaigning and getting elected, promising to lead the fight against amnesty, Marco chose instead to stand with Barack Obama. Senators Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz getting in a few more jabs in the final hours before the Iowa caucuses. And it's time now for our special Iowa Caucus Sunday group. Fox News senior political analyst, Brit Hume. Kathy Obradovich, political columnist for the Des Moines Register. We're honored to have Iowa's governor, Terry Branstad, the longest serving governor in American history. And Ann Guerin of the Washington Post. Kathy, let me start with you. You've been covering Iowa politics for 30 years or so. Put together the new Iowa poll from your paper, the Des Moines Register. What you're seeing on the ground, where do you get a sense of the Republican side things are headed tomorrow night? Well, first of all, I think that we see Donald Trump with a decent lead going into the Iowa caucuses. A five-point lead is usually um, a pretty good indication. However, uh, what makes it exciting is that Ted Cruz really has a lot going for him in this poll, um, including the people who are most likely to turn out, uh, the very conservative voters, evangelicals. We know that if there's a blizzard, they're going to shovel their way to their caucus. And so, you know, there, it, he is right. You know, his, his point that, to you about turning out conservatives is exactly right. Governor Branstad, you have made it very clear during this campaign you're not endorsing anyone, but you kind of disendorsed somebody because you said that you thought it would be a big mistake to support for Iowans to support Ted Cruz because of his opposition to the ethanol mandate. And you've had some nice things to say about Donald Trump, that, that he is talking about effective leadership, about making America great again. So I guess my question is, for voters who are wavering between the two front runners, Cruz and Trump, are you saying go with Trump? No, what I'm saying is we've got a lot of really great candidates, and most of them support renewable energy. Iowa leads the nation in ethanol, biodiesel, and wind energy. And Cruz's voting record has been against ethanol. It's been against uh, the tax credit for wind energy. And those are thousands of jobs in our state. Farm income is important. I'm the governor of Iowa. I want Iowa voters to be well-informed. I trust Iowa voters. They've elected me many times. And I trust them to make the decision they think of who they think would be the best leader for this country. But if it's Cruz and anybody, you're saying go for the anybody. Well, I'm just saying Cruz's record has been against renewable fuels. Renewable fuels, Iowa leads the nation. in renew We produce more ethanol than we consume in gasoline. We're the leader in wind energy. We just saw the wind energy tax credit uh, extended. Uh, Cruz is opposed to that. Those are thousands of jobs in our state, 43 ethanol plants, people making wind blades and turbines and towers, and uh, we want to protect those jobs. We want to continue to grow the Iowa economy. Yeah, I think, I think you've made your point. Britt, there are a couple of big stories going into tomorrow night. One is obviously who's going to win, and it seems it's likely to be one of these two front runners, Trump or Cruz. There's also the, the question of how well Marco Rubio does. Is he a strong third, a weak third? Does he not even finish third? Depending on how those questions are answered, how much could this result, the Iowa caucuses, reshape the race? Well, some of the candidates are going to come out of here having done so poorly that unless they've somewhere got some money squirreled away that, that they may not have, uh, they're not going to be able to continue because you simply have to have money to continue. Um, this, is, this is the way it's always been. Um, and I would say this, by the way, about, about the Trump supporters. They don't particularly fit the profile of your, of your Iowa caucus goer. But my sense of their intensity is that they're the most intense, some of the most intense people I've ever dealt with. I see them all the time on Twitter. They don't, they don't care for any criticism of him. My sense is that, that, that they will turn out. Now, some of them may go to the wrong place, although, but I think they're going to be out in force. And I don't think anybody should count on a low turnout from the Trump people uh, hoping, to, hoping to overtake him. Yeah, when you say the wrong place, you mean because you have to show up. It's, it's different than a, than a primary. You have to show up at a school gym or a church basement. And you got to spend a couple of hours standing up for your person, and you got to show up in the right precinct to have your vote count. We ask you for questions for the panel, and we got this on Facebook from Mel Van, and this was on Trump's decision to boycott the debate. He writes, I was disappointed in Donald and think it could hurt him in Iowa. 
Do you agree? And uh, how do you answer, Mel? And do you think that Trump's decision to stay out of the Fox debate could hurt him in the caucuses? Well, you would think it would, uh, but it really seems to have been a no harm, no foul uh, uh, outcome. Uh, he clearly uh, did very, very well um, in this very predictive, historically predictive poll. Uh, and within that poll are, are findings that, that really don't seem to indicate at all that uh, people are pen penalizing him for having skipped. And at the same time, the, the ratings were, for, for the debate were high. It, it, it sort of it seems to have neutralized on both sides. Governor, your sense. Uh, does the debate boycott hurt Trump? Is it something that they're going to affect votes? I certainly wouldn't advise anybody to skip a Fox debate right before the election. God bless Iowa. you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that he had an event for veterans, he had a huge turnout for that, he's a very unconventional candidate. And he's done a lot of things that we thought would hurt him that doesn't seem to have. I guess we'll find out on Monday night. I just don't know. Kathy, uh, just to, to finish with you, because the, the Des Moines Register poll was interesting. Basically, almost 80 percent of voters either said that they approved of the decision to skip or they just didn't care. But there was about 30 percent. I, I, actually, my numbers are wrong. It was 29 percent who said they did. It did bother them. I mean, 29 percent could be a factor in a 20, close race. 29 percent said it bothered them and 25 percent said it helped them. So we've got to be about a 4 percent there where, um, you know, where the difference is. And, you know, is that 4 percent going to be uh, a difference in on caucus night? You know, maybe if the debate were last night, um, it might be right on the top of people's thinking. Um, the thing is, though, Ted Cruz uh, was there and was exposed to uh, a lot of tough uh, attacks as well. So, uh, you know, I think, I think that overall, good for Trump. All right. Good for Trump. Interesting. Yes. Panel, we have to take a break here.